tends to have very little, if any, vitamin C in it. So they would go out as these big, honking, monster, uh, ugly pirates, and they came back as these little, wimpy, monster, ugly pirates, but they were wimpy because their collagen had fallen apart. Okay? Lack of vitamin C kept their collagen fibers from holding together. Now, what happens is the older you get, you accumulate those sorts of connections. And when you accumulate those connections, you become less flexible. I'm less flexible than anybody in this room, I'll wager. Okay? Now, you can improve your flexibility, and yes, you can make new collagen and things like that. But in general, when you see loss of flexibility, that's happening as a result of accumulated uh, uh, interactions that are strengthening, making you stronger collagen, but not flexible. So, very important um, consideration, a very nu important nutritional consideration. Okay, uh, there's what, to remind you what hydroxylysine, hydroxyproline looks like. You don't need to worry about the structures. But that hydroxyl group that you see, and I've lost my pointer, that hydroxyl group that you see right here is added after the protein is made. And the hydroxyl group that you see right here is added after the hydroxyl protein is made. These guys can interact and form a covalent bond between them and strengthen those fibers. Okay. Questions on that? Yeah. So here's an extra OH that's put on. That, that's what makes it the hydroxylysine, uh, and this is what makes it the hydroxyproline. So if you put these into close proximity, let's say two fibers next to each other, they can form a covalent bond and split out water. So that's, that's, that's what, what, what happens with those? Yes. So the question is, does hydroxylysine form only with hydroxylysine or hydroxyproline? You can have combinations of them. Most of the um, uh, uh, complexes that have been studied are actually involving hydroxylysine, uh, but hydroxyproline is also involved as well. Okay. Well, there we go. And fibrous versus globular, I've already said that. So here's, a, here's a, a, a graphical depiction of a fibrous protein. Notice no folds. We just see coil, 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 goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. Okay. Here's myoglobin. It has, it has coils, but they fold, and so the folds give us a distinctive shape. One of the things you might wonder about is curly hair. You ever think about curly hair? Why does somebody have curly hair and somebody not have curly hair? Okay. You can explain it, actually, and it's kind of cool. It turns out that your hair has a variety of amino acids in there. One of the amino acids that is found in your hair to varying degrees is the amino acid cysteine, C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E. Cysteine is that amino acid I said you should know for a good reason for its side chain. Does anybody remember what the side chain is? It has an SH. It's a sulfhydryl. And it turns out that sulfhydryls are in fact, um, uh, very reactive. They will react. You put another sulfhydryl next to it, and they'll split out the two hydrogens and make a sulfur-sulfur bond. It's called a disulfide bond. And that's a covalent bond, and it's stronger than any hydrogen bond. So imagine that every so often I have a couple of cysteines that are close to each other, and they just sort of do a little bit of this, all of a sudden, they can form that covalent bond, and I've made a sort of slight bend in that, in that chain that's there. Not a full bend like I see here, but just a little change from normal. That's what gives rise to curls. So curls arise as a result of disulfide bonds between cysteine residues in your hair. Okay? In days gone by, women used to go get permanents. I never saw guys get permanents, and I'm not sure why. But, you, but women used to go get permanents, okay? And when they went to the hairdresser, they came out stinking. A permanent is taking and using a chemical that breaks those disulfide bonds, and that takes a sulfurous compound to do that. That's the stinky part, okay? And then the, once those bonds are broken, then you can curl hair and cause the bonds to form in a new direction. And so the permanent, which really isn't, it's, it's sort of misnamed, will now hold its shape for a, longer, for, a, for a reasonable period of time, up to a month or so, before those bonds themselves finally break and you revert back to what you had. 
Okay? So curls in hair arise as a result of that, and that's why um, going by a beauty salon, you smell a lot of stinky things. What causes those bonds to break over a period of time? You know, I don't have a good answer to that question. I'd like to know that myself. You would think they would just be as stable as this bond is right here. Once you break it, you'd make it. My feeling is that probably you're making an unnatural fold when you're doing that. And so it's just the tension of that fold that ultimately is causing it to, to, to go. Growth of hair will also affect it, since the new stuff coming out isn't going to be the same as the old. But I don't know the full answer to your, to your question. It's a good question. OK. Um, what do you think about stopping right there? Everybody in favor? All right, let's stop right there. Yes? The two structures that you showed, um, hydroxy, I can't remember. Uh, Proline, hydroxy lysine? Uh -huh. Yeah, um, they're different only in one was a ring and one was a uh, straight chain. Well, they have different R groups. The, oh, OK. Yeah. Um, Oh, so those, were, those two that you showed that were right next to those weren't resonant structures of each other? That were just no, 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 no. They're different amino acids. Hydroxy lysine, hydroxy proline. So okay. proline has a different uh, R group than lysine does. Okay. What caused the chain to, in the um, one that was in a, in a ring, what causes that to make a ring? That's its, that's its native structure. That's Proline's the one I said that has the ring built into it. So it's, oh, it's made okay, that way. It's, it's made that yeah, way. Right. Okay, thank you. Yes. Like yep. Like yep. Last yep. Exactly. Your hair wants to fold into that into that structure. Yeah. Okay. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. What's up? Um, I have a few questions. Sucralose is that Splenda? Yep. Is that, okay. It's Splenda. Yep. So there are just a bunch of chlorine compounds. In chlorine carbon compounds. Yep. And are they doing any research on the long term? So it's been around since... It's been around a little while. Uh, the problem is, we're the test tubes. So if you're going to do it over a long period of time, the only way you can do it is if you put it out there on people. So they don't see any really short-term effects? Though? Well, the short-term effects and the, even the longer-term effects on animals have, have been okay. But I would just, you know, it's so hard to anticipate all the different problems that might arise. So Splenda's one I would just, I would be careful with. Or do, you take, do you use Splenda? I don't, yeah. but I know someone who does, but yeah. religiously, so... Oh, yeah, well, you might tell them what I said. Yeah, and also, what is it that causes um, the increase or the accumulation of the collagen?